It's like no, five it's pounds inflation. every time you go to the toilet, inflation. not only whole carnival. I had some in London. I had somebody who was one of the participants in the carnival, and there was like this enormous butterfly of enormous wings, and they knocked on the door and they said, "Look, I'm so desperate. I'm really sorry. I'm desperate for the loot. Can I use the loot?" I said, "Yeah, of course you can." Suddenly, this giant moth came into the room, <laughs> and then I had to help the wings to sort of get him oh, so he could no. get into the <laughs> toilet because it was really small. And uh, anyway, it took a while to get him out too because of the uh, the wing span. How did you? So you, did you have to help with all of that yourself? Well, I had to help you him get in there. Crushed him in. Well, and then. Crushed him in, and then closed the door, let him have some privacy, and then, and then helped unravel him out as he fluttered away to the rest of the procession. <laughs> <laughs> did you charge him two quid? No, of course not. How much did you charge him? No, oh, it's for free. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've yeah. not had that many like luck. Yeah. in Notting Hill Carnival. Anyway, guys, that was a dope um, new song. Thanks. Um, let's go, can, we, let's take it all the way back to Straight to Hell and the making of that because that song is kind of, it was quite unusual song off the album compared to all the other al songs that were on the album. So where did that song come from? Well, we, it sort of came together uh, in a way... It, came up as a, sort of a riff, really, didn't it? I mean, I remember sort of a conversation. Actually, there was one song, there was a Gregory Isaac song that I was listening to at the time, and that sort of gave me uh, sort of inspiration when I heard the sort of basic pattern. And uh, there's a song called, I think it's called Slave Ruler, and it's got a certain pattern in it, and uh, usually it's played on the snare, but what Topper did, he took the snare off, so you just heard sort of like the sort of sound that you hear. Uh, and uh, But yeah, that's sort of made up in the studio, really. Yeah, you know the strings on it? Uh, they're all done on guitar synth, like early guitar synths, you know, so it's like you hear those, what you think is strings, it's me playing guitar. Oh, wow. Uh, doing that. Yeah, in between whale noises, the uncontrollable whale noises that you, I sort of put them down. But and um, Diplo, that was a you you sampled that track. What, where did that idea come from? Um, I just love the sound. I actually lo love that. I kind of knew that was guitar. That was a kind of like a harmonics kind of sound. Yeah, I kind of like really liked the way that 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 loop sounded, and. Um, I just had to loop the intro from that song on loop for a while and just never got old for me. So that's when you know it's a good sample. So I just built a song around that. And when you guys, I mean, that song's obviously blown up. And when you guys heard that, what did you think of um, well, Paper great. Plane? I thought it was fantastic. Like the, the attitude, the vocal, everything. I thought it was really good. And, and she's from South London as well. It's like South Hall. <coughs> yeah. or, no, Mitchell. South Mitchell. Hall. West London. Are you talking about Acton. MIA? Um, yeah. Acton, right? Yeah. I thought she was from West, West London. Oh, okay. She, but she was, she knows, she knows Damon, you know, from a, from a long time. Mm. She, she was, she ended up living in West London with uh, with Damon's girlfriend at the time for a while. But she's from everywhere in, that, in, in London. And she went to school east at uh, St. Martin's. So she was just a product of London. So was it the British Connect that made you also? S Get, I, have no, I, don't, I don't think she'd ever heard that Clash song, but I think uh, she knew who they were 100%. And um, we, we actually recorded it in, in a studio somewhere in Brixton, the song. But yeah, I guess it all came back to England. And I think I, my great-great-grandfather's probably English, so it there you go. All, yeah, it all, all came all together. Mixed together. And, you know, that song was, like I said, it was a huge success. And then at, at one point you had, like, all the biggest names in hip-hop, like rhyming over your beat what did that feel like felt good <laughs> <laughs> um there's a lot of funny versions i think rick ross did one there's a lot of reggae it was just cool it was a really viral song of that year and i think it was cool to be part of it yeah and as with mia would you work with her again in the future um yeah i mean i don't know i don't know if she's making music at the moment but i think uh it'd be really cool to do some stuff make yeah. some more good tracks I guess I don't know what uh, what we would make. I don't think there's, there's I don't know what kind of music there would be now. You know, at the time we were like the sound of that that time. You know, cool. and we were making music that that just was came out of nowhere. You know, and I think that that really mattered back then. I think now there's a lot of people that are doing that. They're kind of like with that punky vibe and stuff like that. So 
not sure where we would go next, you know. But you're kind of open to that. I'm open to anything, yeah, always. And you guys, when you heard it, you said you liked the sample, but did you approve it? Yeah, we did. Otherwise, I'd be... Yeah, I'd be <laughs> <laughs> Did you, 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 you guys all laughed about like having your lawyers involved yeah. and stuff. Well, so cause we, because we didn't, I mean, they, we must have all, someone that spoke about it. I don't know, someone behind in, in the, I don't really deal with any of that stuff, yeah. but I, I actually wouldn't have thought they might have heard, not even ever heard it. They might have just somebody who publishes, I don't know, but would have done, would have done the deal, but they must have yeah. checked it out, which is cool. But they, you didn't try and like sneakily do it under the radar, I think you kind of, no, everything I was I had, done. I actually had to replay all, all those samples because I didn't want to, uh, to to have to negotiate the master rights as well. And there's like all things, kinds of things that we were doing. But as the songwriters, they had to, of course, be, know what was going on. And, and plus, if you put that song, was, it's not like a, it's like a pretty big song, even so, of their, their record. So it was like you can't really get away with it. Yeah, I mean, if also we were selling the the song. I mean, we made a mixtape, me and MIA, and we we didn't we didn't release that in any real form. Just like you know, we sold it like out of our back of our trunk. Lots of unclear samples on that, but not that one. Nah, you got If you're gonna make a if you wanna make a big record out of it, you gotta probably put probably make it all right, you know, with every all the parties involved. And guys, did you make a lot of money from it? I don't know. We have to ask our lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> they made a lot of money from it. <laughs> Well, cool. I, I just, uh, yeah, it's the last question, but I want to ask both of you because you both all have such reggae influence. Diplo, you're doing a lot of stuff with reggae and dancehall, and you guys, even at, with The Clash, you did a few reggae covers. Um, who are your favourite reggae artists? But, um, big Youth, uh, he's pretty big. Um, I Roy, U Roy, a lot of those guys. Um, I, I reckon probably the most influential for me is probably Leroy Sibbles. He was the, the singer and the bass player for the Heptones. Yep. Uh, I would say uh, Bob Marley, you know. Did you guys yeah. linked up through Lee Scratch? Right? Uh, in a way, yeah. Um, we knew uh, Lee Scratch Perry produced uh, Complete Control. Our, it was our third single or second Some, single. Yeah. And uh, he did that, and then bef before that, it wasn't. It wasn't. We had this kind of. We forged a reggae punk alliance sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Because there was a, there wasn't that many punk records at the time, and so we kind of supplemented it with reggae records as well. All yeah. that rebel music going and on. The, and the deep bass. And, the, so. and what about you, to play? I think you can't really beat Bob Marley, especially the stuff that he wrote with uh, with um, Lee Perry. You know, before you know, when he was doing records like um, just that kind of dubby and dark and crazy stuff. Even with the Whalers, just think some of the songwriting was phenomenal. And I got to just say, Vibes Cartel because for me it was like somebody that just came out of nowhere in the dancehall world and just took over an entire genre and um, questioned so many things. And I loved his attitude too. So. Um, in talking about Cartel, obviously his verdict is out tomorrow. Do you have an opinion on what you think is going to happen? Because I know Buster's down there at the moment supporting the trial. Um, I have no idea, and I think that it's going to be very difficult for him to be innocent. But um, because, but, but, hey, good luck to him. And um, we tried. We, we we've been trying to do stuff with him while he's been in jail. But um, it's been difficult, of course, as it should be. But yeah. he's been making a lot of records still in jail. So 